This videotape will present an up-close and detailed examination of the saw cuts used to fell trees. It is intended to build upon basic principles taught in other material. This video is also intended to give the experienced Sawyer the opportunity to evaluate his own approach to falling in the light of the physical forces involved in the felling process. You will see how your choices as a Sawyer combine with the nature of the tree and surrounding terrain to produce what we call the physics of falling. This presentation will cover five main points. We'll look first at preparing yourself and the area around a tree before you fall it. Next, we'll look at cutting technique. What makes a good undercut? How do I make the cuts of the face properly? And what happens if I don't? The third part of the video will examine the importance of hinge wood, often called holding wood, in safe falling practice. After a word on the use of wedges, we'll close with pointers on staying safe while the tree is actually on the way to the ground. All set? Then let's get ready to knock a few down. Even the most experienced Sawyer will be unprepared to do his job without the proper safety equipment. So remember to protect yourself from saw cuts with shafts, from debris with a regulation hard hat. Cocked boots will help keep your footing firm, and don't forget to wear your eye and ear protection. Finally, a whistle will help you notify your buddies of an emergency situation or personal injury. You'll need to make certain that your saw is ready for the day's work. Is the bar length right for the timber you're cutting? Check the chain brake and trigger locks, and above all, keep that chain sharp. The experienced Sawyer knows that his first task begins with the morning line-out session where the day's work patterns and special problems are discussed. He knows that the location of his co-workers and equipment are part of the formula of the physics of falling. As you approach a tree, you'll need to read the lean of the tree. How can you use its direction of growth and the natural forces working on the tree in order to direct its fall where it needs to go? Remember the two tree length rule. You will need to be certain that a distance of at least two tree lengths lies between you and your fellow sawyers or any other logging activity. Widowmakers, snags, and other danger trees represent safety hazards through their own potential movement and their effect upon the tree you're planning to fall. You'll need to be aware of these hazards to ensure your safety. You must control your work environment. Don't let it control you. Outlining these problems and eliminating or controlling them should be part of the original surveying of a strip. Up to this point, we've taken the proper precautions to maximize safety conditions while you cut the tree. The last step before beginning the cut is to plan your escape routes. The optimum direction for such a route is at a 45 degree angle to the tree and uphill from it. Set that escape route and at least one alternate route in your mind and use it to get clear when the tree is falling. Reading the lean of a tree will guide you in making a face cut that'll get the job done. There are many styles of cuts in use today, but the most reliable one is to cut at a 45 degree angle to a depth of one third of the tree's diameter. Remember, you have your saw's sights to help you in getting your cut aimed just right. The height of the face is more important than the depth of the cut in controlling the fall of the tree. Remember, control is the guiding principle of the physics of falling. The right cut will direct the tree where you want it to fall and maintain control of the fall until the physical forces acting on the tree make it unlikely that it'll end up anywhere but where you want it to land. Let's examine how the undercut helps or interferes with a good, safe fall. If you make the undercut too short, the halves of the face will meet too soon as the tree falls. Once those faces meet, you've lost control of the fall before the direction of the momentum has been established. 
On the other hand, a cut that's wide, even as much as 90 degrees, extends control of the fall. A cut like this is used when you need to control the fall all the way to the ground before the faces meet. A Dutch cut results from failing to properly match your face cuts so that your horizontal cut extends past the angle cut. The small cut extension then produced becomes the functional undercut and can cause the tree to split or barber chair during falling. However, when a skilled sawyer puts all the elements of the face cut together right, he produces a smooth, safe, controlled fall in the desired direction. We've already mentioned holding wood in terms of the Dutch cut. Let's take a closer look at the role of holding wood in the physics of falling. Holding wood is a critical factor in controlling a fall. You create holding wood as you make your back cut and come toward the face cut. The back cut must approach the face cut properly coming in level and above the apex of the face cut. How much above? A good rule of thumb is one to two inches on a large diameter tree. The amount of holding wood you'll need to leave will depend on the size of the tree and the tree's lean. It's important to keep in mind that for optimum control, the holding wood should extend across the entire width of the tree. When making your back cut, check around behind the tree to make certain that you're staying on the correct vertical and horizontal planes as you cut. Slick stumping means deliberately choosing a back cut which is too low, ending up even with the bottom of the face cut. Slick stumping is an ill-advised technique which is rejected by the experienced sawyer who wants to work smart and work safe. Slick stumping is especially hazardous when falling trees uphill or into standing timber. A cut which is too high or, as sometimes happens, lower than the face cut is also dangerous when it comes to controlling a tree's fall. When bad back cuts occur, disaster can result to both trees and humans. A back cut that's too high can produce a barber chair splitting the trunk of the tree. A barber chair forms a pivot on which the tree can thrust out in any direction with the explosive force of a catapult. Bad back cuts can cause excessive wood pull from the tree and can ruin valuable wood product. Worst of all, failure to produce a good back cut and holding wood will cause the tree to miss its intended mark, endangering you and making the tree difficult to skid. A good set of wedges is important in felling a tree. Wedges not only help keep the bar of your saw from binding as you cut, they're also a hedge against the forces acting upon the tree. These forces include difficult leans and the wind, which may be trying to persuade the tree to go its way instead of the way you want it to go, as well as the slick conditions of wet and wintry weather. You should carry at least three or four wedges and an ax for driving them. When using wedges, remember that some of them have a top and bottom and have to be driven in right side up in order to give the most efficient lift. You'll also need to keep the head of the wedge trued up, dressing any protrusions created by the blows of the ax. Using good wedges continually and generously when falling will give you an extra measure of safety. When an experienced sawyer has followed all these steps, the moment of truth has arrived and a well-timed, well-placed timber fall will occur. But there's still a few safety steps to remember during the fall itself. The first of these is to stay aware. As the tree nears the point of falling, tune in on the space around you for co-workers and remember the two tree length rule before you fall the tree. Finally, don't stand there like a duck looking at thunder. Use your escape route and get behind a cover tree. This video has examined how the experienced Sawyer can best apply his experience to the physics of falling 
in order to produce a safe, controlled, on-target fall. We've reviewed the importance of preparing for a safe, productive fall by having the right equipment and reducing hazards in the work area. Reading the lean of a tree will tell you how to approach making your cuts in order to put the tree where you want it to fall. Making a good face cut and back cut maximize control by giving the tree enough time for natural forces to keep it going in the desired direction. The right cut will also leave enough holding wood to keep the tree whole and held until it is nearly through falling. The use of well cared for wedges are your best hedge against the forces of gravity and nature which want to take control of the fall away from you. Finally, protect yourself and your buddies during the fall by staying aware of your surroundings, giving a clear warning signal, and using your escape route. We hope that this video has been able to give you a close-up view of the various situations that arise in the course of falling a tree. By combining what we've shown you with the knowledge you've already gained through work experience, you will be able to enhance your ability to produce safe, well-controlled timber falls.